Hi, it's Katrina. Number 10. Dunatar Castle Dunatar Castle sits perched on the edge of a great sea cliff overlooking the endless blue ocean. It is one of the most dramatic and romantic ancient castles in Scotland. It truly looks like somewhere straight out of a fairy tale. This place was once a mighty medieval fortress, the location for some of the most noteworthy events in British history. The castle has been burned, torn down, rebuilt, and then burned again. Armies have laid siege to the castle, it's been the home of queens and saints, and today it's nothing but a magical ruin. Nobody knows when people first arrived and lived on the rocky outcrop where the fortification now stands. Some historians say it may have been a prehistoric settlement going back over 2,000 years. What we know for sure is that the earliest historical record is of a church on the Rock of Dunotar in the 5th century AD. The church was established by St. Ninian as one of the first Christian sites in northern Scotland. Then, over the years, the church transformed. It became a fort, a settlement, and then, finally, a castle. In the 9th century, King Donald II tried to use the castle to defend against a surprise Viking attack. The defense was a huge failure, and the Vikings struck the king down right there in his own home. The most famous occupier of the castle was William Wallace. Wallace was a total savage in the 13th century. He captured the castle and burned alive the English refugees who took shelter in the church. These surviving buildings are largely from the 15th and 16th centuries. You can visit the magical remains for yourself, and it's one of Scotland's most iconic locations. The castle has inspired many backgrounds for films, including Hamlet from 1990 and my personal favorite animated movie, Disney Pixar's Brave. Have you ever been here before? This place is definitely on my bucket list. Number 9. The Pantheon it's hard to find somewhere more legendary in Rome than the Pantheon. Sure, the Colosseum is impressive, but the Pantheon is something else entirely. This monument is the physical representation of Rome's glory and has been for 2,000 years. It was built by Emperor Agrippa around 25 BC. Initially, the Great Temple was dedicated to the 12 major gods of Rome. The building that still stands was likely a reconstruction of the original Pantheon commissioned by Emperor Hadrian between 118 and 125 AD. The building technique used in the construction is quite extraordinary. It's one of the few ancient Roman buildings that's remained perfectly stable and almost fully intact. As with many Roman constructs, the purpose behind the Pantheon changed as the years went by. What was originally a temple to the pagan gods soon became a piece of Christian history. In 608, Pope Boniface IV had the corpses of martyrs removed from their original resting places in the Christian catacombs and put in the Pantheon. From that moment onward, the temple was officially a Christian building. Its name was changed to Saint Maria and Martyrs. The Pantheon is still being used as a place of Christian worship today. But if you look deep within the roots of the building, you'll see it was once a legendary temple a place where early Romans came to give praise to the 12 gods. And now for number 8, but first, it's shout-out time! I want to say a big thank you to Chiswack and the Youngblood 46 for supporting this channel. Be sure to subscribe if you haven't already for more videos about amazing legendary places. Number 8. Castle Sant'Angelo The Castle Sant'Angelo, also known as the Mausoleum of Hadrian, is a massive historic building in a park in Rome. East of the Vatican in Parco Adriano is the building commissioned by Roman Emperor Hadrian to be his final resting place. It should come as no surprise to anyone that Roman emperors were often narcissistic. Every single one of them wanted a grand monument to be remembered by, and it worked. While most of them tried to complete at least one major building project to make their name immortal, Hadrian succeeded spectacularly. He was behind the Hadrian Wall, and his mausoleum is one of the most impressive buildings in Rome today. Just like the legendary Pantheon, the mausoleum went through changes. It was built between 134 and 139 AD, and that was when it looked its best. Legend has it the mausoleum was topped with a lush garden like a hanging jungle. Hadrian's ashes were placed within his tomb in 138. So too were the ashes of his wife Sabina and their adopted son Lucius. 
But here's where everything started going wrong for Emperor Hadrian. He had expected the tomb to be used only for the remains of himself and his immediate family members. But these succeeding emperors were also buried in his tomb. The last recorded burial was Emperor Caracalla in 217. Nearly a century of dead Roman rulers had their ashes put in urns and then stored in a treasury room deep in the mausoleum. Then things changed again. The mausoleum was transformed into a military fortress in 401. The Visigoths who looted Rome in 410 scattered the ashes of all those who were buried inside. Hadrian had his ashy remains thrown around the pillaged streets of Rome. The whole place was smashed, burned, and all its statues and decorations destroyed. But the building wasn't finished yet. Its bones were still good and strong. In the following years, the structure was turned into a castle. And in the 14th century, Pope Nicholas III connected the castle to St. Peter's Basilica using a secret underground passage, now called the Paseto di Borgo. Number 7. St. Brendan's Island St. Brendan's Island is a legendary island believed to be located somewhere in the Atlantic Ocean, somewhere near northern Africa. Legend goes that the island was discovered by St. Brendan in the year 512. St. Brendan traveled across the ocean with 14 monks, stumbled upon an uninhabited piece of land, and they stayed there for 15 days. According to the legend, the party was only there for two weeks, but the ships waiting for their return said they were gone for a full year. The whole time the island remained shrouded in a thick haze of fog and couldn't be reached by anyone else. The island became a kind of marine ghost story, and even today, nobody knows if it truly exists. Later on in the Middle Ages, a monk by the name of Barino claimed he too discovered the mysterious island paradise shrouded in fog. The island was covered in thick woods. The sun never set, and the trees were ripe with fruit. The birds sang and the rivers flowed, and it was a land of abundance and peace. The king of Portugal became interested in the island in the 15th century. Famous explorer Henry the Navigator allegedly came across the island but couldn't reach it because of dangerous sea conditions. When he tried to find it again, the island had simply vanished. Even Christopher Columbus believed in the existence of St. Brendan's Island. It was included in maps until very recently, but in modern times, no sea captain has ever laid eyes on it. Number 6. Mount Penglai Mount Penglai is a legendary place from Chinese and Japanese mythology, but no one can say with any certainty if the place truly exists. Ancient Chinese texts describe the mountain as being situated at the eastern part of the Bohai Sea. In mythology, prior to the Qin Dynasty, it was said Mount Penglai contains the secrets for the elixir of life. The mountain was home to the immortals, very similar to Mount Olympus in Greece. Chinese myth says the immortals lived in a massive palace at the top of the mountain, a palace made from gold and silver with trees sprouting jewels. There have been various theories offered as to the true location of Mount Penglai, but nobody's ever been able to decide on one. Some say it's in Japan, some say Korea, others say Taiwan, nobody knows the truth. But historians are fairly certain the mountain from legend was based on a real mountain somewhere in Asia. Emperor Qin Shi Huang, founder of the Qin Dynasty and unifier of China, even went in search of the mountain. At some point during his rule between 221 and 210 BC, he went on a journey to find Mount Penglai and obtain the secret to immortality. He never found it and never became immortal. However, one of his servants supposedly discovered Mount Fuji in Japan and mistook that for the mythical mountain. Number 5. Misty Peaks of the Azores 800 miles west of Portugal are the Azores Islands. For most people, the volcanic archipelago is an exotic paradise for partying and expensive vacations. However, these pristine islands could be the mountaintops from the famous sunken landmass we call Atlantis. Ocean explorer Thor Heyerdahl, along with Dr. Dominique Gorlitz from Oslo, recently came forward with some shocking information. They revealed that archaeologists discovered ruins of what appear to be pyramid-like structures on the islands that predate the original Portuguese settlements. 
These structures appear to be linked to similar mysterious buildings uncovered in North Africa, the Canary Islands, and Sicily. Another thing is that the Azores Islands chain is directly in front of the Pillars of Hercules, sitting in the exact position Plato claimed Atlantis was. We don't have a lot of physical proof to go off of right now, but there are a lot of coincidences that point to the magical lands of the Azores as being the ancient mountaintops of Atlantis. When Atlantis supposedly flooded about 12,000 years ago, it may have left only its mountains above sea level. It could be that at the bottom of the ocean, off the coast of the Azores, is the buried proof we need that Atlantis really did exist. Do you think this could be the location of the legendary Atlantis? Let me know your thoughts in the comments, and while you're at it, be sure to subscribe! Number 4. The City of the Round Pyramid In the 14th century, a group of people known as the Purepecha emerged in central Mexico and started to bully the Aztec. As the powerful Aztec civilization expanded, the Purepecha pushed against them in the northwest. They were the second biggest force in Mexico before the Spanish arrived. For whatever reason, the Aztec were just unable to defeat them. The capital of the Purepecha people was a city called Zinzunzan, which translates to Place of Hummingbirds. The name kind of sounds like the buzz of a hummingbird's wings, right? After the fall of the Aztec capital, Tenochtitlan, in 1521, the Purepecha knew they were in trouble. They sent an emissary to the Spanish in hopes that they could avoid a similar fate, but they couldn't, or at least they made a big mistake. The Spanish arrived at the city in 1522 and were confronted by a massive army of 100,000 soldiers. However, the Purepecha didn't wish to fight. They instead submitted to the Spanish and agreed to pay tribute if the Spanish would just leave them alone. You may already know how this story ends. The Spanish government gradually beat down these people until, by the 1530s, they were nearly extinct. The capital was changed from Tzintzunzan to Pátzcuaro. The native land was now the Spanish province of Michoacán, and soon the fabled city was abandoned. All the remains of Tzintzunzan are a group of destroyed pyramids. These people had a knack for building tall, circular pyramids. They were unlike the pyramids built by other cultures of Mesoamerica, but now they are totally destroyed in utter shambles, and very little research has been done to find out the truth about them. The city and its pyramids are almost forgotten, and yet only 500 years ago it was a city that could rival anything built by the Aztec or the Maya. Number 3. The Agra Fort The Agra Fort in India was once the seat of the Mughal emperors. The history of the fort is tied directly to other notable Mughal-era constructions like the Taj Mahal. It was built by Emperor Akbar in 1565 and served as the principal residence for all rulers until 1638. That was when the capital of the empire changed from Agra to Delhi, which is still the capital of India to this day. The very last Indian rulers who occupied the megalithic fortress were the Marathas. Then came the British. The British defeated the Marathas in 1803 in what was known as the Battle of Asai and took ownership of the fortified city. Then the Indian Rebellion of 1857 caused the British East India Company to lose control, which itself led to 100 years of authoritarian rule by Britain. Just like the Taj Mahal, which is the Agra Fort's sister monument, the fort is something out of a dream. It has tall red walls up to 70 feet high, yawning gates, and double ramparts to keep out invaders. Battlements, drawbridges, a moat, and everything else you would expect to find in a medieval fortress. It was more of a walled city than just a military fortification. The most striking feature is the red sandstone, which makes the fortress look all that more imposing. Number 2. Corvin Castle Corvin Castle is one of the most striking castles in Europe. It's also one of the biggest, with construction beginning in Romania in 1440. It was designed as a formidable defensive fortress to ward away the Ottoman invaders. It was also likely used briefly as a prison for the legendary Vlad the Impaler. When talking about Romanian castles, Corvin Castle is even more spectacular than Peles Castle, 
and more mystically eerie than Bran Castle. Construction of the castle was ordered on behalf of John Hunyadi and his son, Matthias Corvinus. Matthias was the king of Hungary from 1458 to 1490, and their whole family had a huge impact on Europe that century. John Hunyadi was infamous for his brutal campaign in Belgrade. He was also related to Vlad the Impaler himself, the man behind the inspiration for Count Dracula. Corvin Castle is still in surprisingly good condition today. The Knight's Hall is still ready to hold a grand feast. The Diet Hall is waiting for its next ceremony. These circular stairways lead down to dungeons and up into tower rooms. The whole place is especially spooky at night, when the shadows come out and the forest falls quiet. Would you spend the night in this castle? Let me know in the comments! Number 1. Baalbek Baalbek is an ancient Phoenician city taken straight from a Mesopotamian legend. The remains of the fabled city can be found in modern Lebanon, not far from the city of Beirut. The history of Baalbek goes back at least 11,000 years. It's so unbelievably old that nobody knows the truth of its origins. Ancient people most certainly lived here at the dawn of civilization, but the exact details are foggy at best. When civilization truly got going with the rise of Mesopotamian kingdoms, Baalbek became a center of worship. This was an important pilgrimage site visited by people all over the ancient world. The city was particularly famous for its patron gods, Baal the sky god and his consort Astarte, queen of heaven. At the very center of the city was an unimaginably huge temple dedicated to both gods. It may have been one of the biggest temples ever built in the ancient world. But sadly, the temple was destroyed and the Romans built the Temple of Jupiter right over it. Thanks for watching! Which of these ancient legendary places would you love to visit? Let me know in the comments below! Be sure to subscribe and come back soon for more amazing videos! See you later!